and I'm back again with another random Monday video. So as you can see by the title of this video, today we're going to be talking about stress, how to kind of overcome it, because I'm a teenager, I know where stress comes from for our generation, um, and I know we're coming to the end of January now. I mean, this basically is like the last video that I'm going to be doing in January. <sighs> um, and I'm pretty sure that you've got a lot of mocks coming up if you're in like sixth form, if you're in doing your GCSEs, or even if you're just like in high school and you're just doing general exams or just homework, anything work related this month and the coming months are going to be really full of stress and intense working and it can become too much. I know because I've been there and it really is hard. I know and uh, I'm just basically going to be talking about five different methods that I actually wish that I knew more about when I was doing my exams and when I was like, you know, learning and doing general crap. Um, but I'm actually incorporating them in my life a lot more now. Um, so yeah, let's jump into them. So before I start, I just wanted to mention that for those of you who don't know, I obviously am doing an apprenticeship right now. So I know I'm not at uni, so I'm not technically studying, but apprenticeships are st like still involve a lot of studying and coursework and sometimes exams. Luckily mine is not exam based because I kind of hate exams. <laughs> they can be very stressful and I'm like fully aware for those of you who feel the same way and get quite stressed from exams. Like I know I've been in that position and I completely can relate to that. But yeah, so last year when I was doing my A-levels, or for the last two years actually when I was doing my A-levels, I did not do very well. <laughs> I actually failed a few subjects and I just merely passed a few, so that's like use ease, which is really not good. Like, oh I just hit my knee. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just not very good grades. Um, and obviously, if I was planning on going to uni, which I wasn't at the time anyway, but if I was, like, I would never have got anywhere with grades like that. But luckily, the grades weren't too big of a deal for my apprenticeship. And so I'm actually doing a lot more work now and understanding what I need to do. But obviously, growing up is a huge learning curve. Like, we're not all going to be perfect. So... The last two years I was focusing more on friendship and less on the schoolwork and trying to be the better friend and be more social but this year I'm actually doing the complete opposite which still isn't beneficial because now I'm focusing too much on my work and I've kind of neglected a lot of my friends which is really not good but obviously like I said it's a learning curve it's we have to make these mistakes to realise what we're doing wrong in our lives. Now, you just have to do you, basically. So I'm actually going to start speaking to my friends a lot more and, you know, doing more stuff with them. But anyways, let's actually get cut the jibber-jabber and get into this video. So the first method of dealing with stress can be to do some sort of physical activity. So... I actually learned some of this stuff because I did a stress module in my psychology days in A-levels. I may have failed, well I didn't fail the subject but I got like a really shit grade. <laughs> and yeah, but I actually did come out of learn with learning stuff from there. I can't even speak right now. <laughs> um, so often when you get stressed, your adrenaline and cortisol levels, which are hormones, um, they can really spike so obviously that causes us to be like 
a bit everywhere. That's why when you're stressed, you're a bit kind of hectic, so to say. You're kind of like here, there and everywhere. So in order to combat that, the best, one of the best methods is actually just to take time out of whatever you're doing and just go and do some sort of physical activity, whether it's a quick little brisk walk around your area um, or even just some kind of, you know, do some sit-ups or, um, or even like just, just general exercise, just do something that involves moving around, kind of using that adrenaline that's built in, blah, 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 that has built up within your body and put it into something that's kind of productive, so to say. Now, doing this also can help with your like sleep pattern. So, um, yeah, sometimes your sleep pattern can benefit from this because it means that you're more tired, so to say, when you need to sleep. Because sometimes if you're not doing enough physical activity, your body's still quite awake. It has a lot of adrenaline building up and you're not ready to sleep. So you need to kind of burn that adrenaline off and then you can have a really good night's sleep. Um, but anyway, that actually moves on to the next one, which is getting more sleep. <laughs> so obviously getting more sleep is, is something that all teenagers, I feel, are kind of guilty of not following. I definitely don't follow, I still don't follow it, which is really bad, but I need to start following it a lot more because a lot of the time I can get really, really tired in the morning, so I'm just like, oh, I need something to wake me up. Like, I'll get into work and I'll just be like, coffee, <laughs> coffee. Um, obviously coffee isn't really that good for you either because it's like a short spike of, you get your kind of like, increase and then you'll suddenly drop again which is not very good for your body and too much kind of energy drink or coffee or any kind of caffeine can really affect you um especially your heart so you have to be careful when do, like using things like coffee and any sort of form of caffeine as a supplement <laughs> for sleep <laughs> So yeah, like I said, a lot of us are guilty of like going to bed at like 12 or 1 or 2 in the morning and then having to wake up at 6 or 7 o'clock, which only gives you like 4, 5, 6 hours sleep, which is really not good, especially if you're doing that on a regular basis. You really need to like let your body replenish because otherwise your body's still kind of in that replenishing mood when you're waking up and then you've distracted it and it it just doesn't have the full capacity anymore, which leads to you being tired and stuff, which is not beneficial, especially if you're at school. I mean, even if you do get a lot of sleep, sometimes you still do feel tired in the mornings just because early mornings are not fun, but it's one of life's, you know, it's something we have to deal with. So you've just kind of got to go with it. But a way to kind of help with this is actually a few hours before you plan to go to bed, so first of all, start planning to go to bed early, but also before even going, thinking of going to sleep, like say if you're planning to go to bed at like 10, 11, it's not like much difference, but every little helps. Um, so a few hours before, so say like eight, seven, eight o'clock, stop doing anything that's mentally challenging. So no revision, no homework no nothing like that just take time relax do something that's kind of not mentally stressing so go and run a bath or go and even read a book like that's what I, I'm gonna start doing more often is reading books because I have a lot of books around and I just don't read them anymore I read like I read for like five minutes and then I'm like okay what else can I do I get too distracted by a lot of other things to like kind of combat this is also to plan your revision out and work out so that you do most of it before your scheduled time to relax which then also moves on to our next topic which is manage your time now obviously this is kind of like one of those things that gets said all the time and you kind of sit there and you're like 
it doesn't help me, you know, I can't fully dedicate myself to sit there and be like, okay, I'm gonna do this, then, this, then, this, then, because my life is always changing. I totally understand that, but it is, it does help, like, from, I never used to do them, just because I was like, in your position and being like, no, it's like, I can't dedicate myself to focus that much and be like, okay, I'm actually gonna do this. I just can't. But recently I've actually started doing it a bit more. Not fully, because again, I still know that I'm not gonna dedicate my life fully to it. And it's not a full, it's not really a timetable, so to say, for my sake. It's just, I've kind of set small little deadlines for partial bits of the work. Um, which then allows me to be like, okay, I actually need to get this done early so that I'm not leaving it all to the last minute. Because that naturally is what I would do. I would leave it to the very last minute and then rush and panic about it, which causes stress, which you really want to avoid. Um, so yeah, creating little timetables can help. Just little goals and deadlines can also help. And breaking up whatever you're doing into small sections so don't just go four hours of full hardcore revision or homework or whatever it is you're doing break it up into like i'll do half an hour here or 20 minutes there you know small little chunks like that can just really help you and obviously make sure you do get some kind of downtime in there as well because it's easy to think when you're planning a revision timetable to be like, okay, I need to do X, Y, Z amount of hours and to completely miss over actually having downtime. And then by not planning the downtime, you either break your timetable and put downtime in there yourself without, without it actually being in there, if you know what I mean, um, which then causes stress again, or you don't have downtime at all and you're doing a lot of work so you then build up the stress again so either way it kind of is a lost situation so you need to make sure to plan in some downtime and just make sure that you actually stick to it because by breaking it down into smaller chunks that also kind of gives your brain that time that small little section of time even if it's like 10 20 minutes of downtime in between that little chunk of time gives your brain some time to kind of relax and recover itself so that it can start taking more information in. So the next one is relaxation techniques. Now there are a lot of different techniques out there. I mainly tend to follow three of them. So the main one that I actually do is I listen to a lot of music. So if I'm doing work I'll take five ten minutes out of get away from the work and just plug in some headphones and start listening to some music even sometimes while I'm doing the work. It's not always good to listen to music while you're doing work, but sometimes it can be quite relaxing and just help you focus a little bit more. But also, when I'm listening to the music, I tend to try and listen to the words and really just get into the place, put myself into some kind of, I don't know how to word it, but like a spiritual kind of place where you can think about the words, really kind of let it, sink inside of you and just become you <laughs> that's also weird but yeah like that definitely helps me especially when i'm like on my little walks with my dog um i will definitely make sure i've got some headphones in that kind of firstly it takes it away from me it kind of makes the walk seem a lot smaller because i take him for about half an hour walk and it makes it seem really like quick which is good um and another technique that I tend to use is doing breathing exercises. So just these are really obviously simple. It's so quick and easy to do. It's just sometimes simply going. So in times where you're really, really panicky and stressed, just stop whatever you're doing. Take five minutes and just do those. So inhale really deep and slow and then exhale it all and then inhale again, and then exhale it all out. And keep doing that until you can physically feel your heartbeat slowing down. I actually feel a lot more relaxed. And it's weird because like, 
it's so easy and it actually is effective. Like it might not be effective for long and you might need to do it more and more depending on how stressed you are and like whatever it is you're doing. But yeah, deep breathing is actually really effective. I find that personally. Um, and finally, my other um, technique that I use is watching ASMR videos. Now, not everyone likes these, I know. It's a very acquired taste, so to say. So for those of you who don't know, ASMR stands for, I have to read it because I cannot remember it off by heart, Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Essentially, ASMR is just like kind of like the gentle whispers, weird kind of sounds, like some people do brushing, tapping, things that make you like it's so intense that it kind of makes you feel it in your skull and it can relax you it can also creep you out depending on who you're watching but i will leave some there might be like a little card up there or even some links down below um to some of the ones that i watch some of my favorite asmr videos and if you want you can give it a go if you've already tried it and you don't like it like that's completely fair enough you've just got to find something that works for you because everyone's different we're not all gonna combat stress in the same way now finally the fifth and final way of kind of combating stress is um learning to say no now i often struggle with this one because sometimes you just want to feel like you're being helpful to others and you can put other people's needs before your own so you might have five bits of coursework all you in let's say and someone will come up to you and be like hey i really need some help with this will you help me now before i used to be like yeah sure don't worry it's fine but then that puts you behind causes you to feel more stressed about whatever it is you're doing and then ultimately can end up with you failing like I did which is annoying because it is very hard to say no and I totally understand that but slowly and steadily I am definitely starting to kind of take less responsibilities on because the more that you take on the harder it gets so if you're taking on external classes tutoring work like part-time work all of these things kind of add up and make it really difficult for you to focus on one set thing which is very difficult and it's hard to balance as well <laughs> which I found because <laughs> I had part-time jobs I had well I had part a part-time job and I was a deputy head boy I was taking on responsibilities outside of school like well not outside of school but like extracurricular kind of stuff so I'd be helping at open evenings which take up an entire evening where I could be doing a lot of work but I can't because I'm there helping them which really does not help <laughs> so yeah definitely learn to start saying no obviously don't take that as abuse no don't become abusive with that so don't just like if someone comes up to you don't just be like no 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 don't become a no man become a pathway between yes and no man because you can take on responsibilities it shows that you're a dedicated person and it's good practice to say yes but also be aware of your own self know how much you can cope with in order to not become stressed so anyway guys, I hope that isn't like a long video for you, but I really do hope as well that this helps any of you who are struggling with stress at the moment with exams, homework, coursework, whatever it is that you're facing. And yeah, it just helps you overcome it and it's a learning curve for all of us. Like we're all learning, we're young, we're making mistakes, but ultimately we are kind of becoming better people from it. So Anyway, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out, bitches.